Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops, with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops for psychological operations is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does Psyops fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that first and foremost, Psyops saves lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOP. They think it's something devious and brainwashing. You say you don't know exactly what's going on right now, but we do know that there are some PSYOPs going on, right? Ma'am, I don't know. Cinema PSYOPs. And I believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Why I believe that is because I know how it feels. I know what it does to you. Cinema PSYOPs. They think it's something devious and brainwashing. Two hundred ninety-one consecutive weeks of Cinema Psyops. I'm your host, Court, the guy that's coming at you with all the enthusiasm of a sadist in the middle of March Mate. My co-host, who is thusly oppositely enjoying this, is Matt. I fucking hate March Mate. It's <laughs> one is- of my favorite months, and you fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm shitting on like March Madness for you or some shit, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you not to fuck me, Tony. I told you. <laughs> so I think Matei will now be celebrated in March from here on out. That's fucking, I knew I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> what else did I think was going to fucking happen? Squeak, you fucking <laughs> lab rat. Squeak. Why am I laughing? Because <laughs> you're so masochistic that you I, actually, I, you, you get where I'm coming from and you're like, God damn, that's funny. Yeah, I, it might be that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> See, you, you could be right on this. See, rampant sadism that you are the victim of is completely fine so long as it's in service of the joke. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> these are facts. These are, these are true facts. <laughs> right, that's just how it works. I mean, that's kind of the agreement that we both so, had. Where we're as like, long as yeah. I'm like, God damn, the timing's... I'll laugh at any insult at me as long as I feel the timing's right. <laughs> <laughs> right, like if it's a really good fucking zinger, there's been some where like it's really hurt you that I've personally seen, and then like yeah. you you sit back and you you wait a second and then you're like, God damn it, they got me. <laughs> well, and you here's, just kind of have it a is. respect for it, you know. If if I sit back and think, wow, if that would have been done to somebody else, I'd have laughed hysterically. Then I can't really say anything about anybody hurting my feelings. Just it just I mean because I was. I'd be totally willing to laugh at someone else's mit- misfortune with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if you would have found sadistic glee in the fact yeah. that it made them feel uncomfortable, you can't be pissed when someone uses that level of sadistic glee on you. Yeah, yeah. Like I would have found it fucking hilarious if you ruined somebody else's like special month or something. And like, been like, yeah, we're gonna do something you really hate during this month you love. I'd be like, ha. <laughs> What a jackass. That's hilarious. And and now that it's happening to me, I just, I have to understand it. Yeah, but we're also <laughs> running low 
on Mate. So yeah. maybe. But that doesn't mean that March is not fair game to get fucked with in some way for you from I, now that, on. That, I was about to say, it's not like you're not going to find something else. <laughs> <laughs> I usually try to pick the most fucked up thing I can the closest to the Super Bowl Sunday I can. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just that extra level of, well, he'll be in a really good mood, so let's fucking shit on that. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, he's, he's getting ready to enjoy something. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a two-way street. We're just diamond me out on this one because I'm in the mood to admit it. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? <laughs> I'll I'll ruin plenty of shit for you and take gleefully happiness while doing it. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, let's that's not make why me we're the friends. only victim here. <laughs> yeah, that's, why we're, that's the only reason that we're friends because your exact <laughs> presence constantly causes me pain. This is very true and I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay okay we've padded out the episode enough rats right. nights of terror yes rats nights of terror nights i had to nights. watch this twice because you had to delay the recording <laughs> yeah sorry about that my bad i've seen it before it's really not that bad uh <laughs> we're I- called for once <laughs> for right my unfortunately i i uh about a year or so ago i took a a promotion at a different job so i got like pay upgrade everything unfortunately though i went salaried which means they can tell they own me 24 7 it's pretty much what that means <laughs> but they they pay me well for it so i accept it <laughs> Everybody's selling something. You're just selling extra time. Yep, that's right. At a wholesale rate. Yeah, uh-huh, pretty much. Classic me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but March Mate, focus in on causing you pain. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. My pain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. This is. I mean, I, let's not. Uh, this. This. There are some Mates where I could be like, I see something redeemable in this. That did not happen. <laughs> This there, time around. There are portions of films that Mate has made that are actually quite quite well done for the money that he's doing it with. And there's some stuff that he'll do that's impressive. And then there's just some choices that he makes where you're just like, well, did you just give up? Was this yeah. towards the end of your filming? Why is it like this? Well, um, there, you know, like a good example is there's a movie that is consistently bad that I'm going to have to keep coming back to. But uh-huh. if you can get into the level of bad it is at the start, like this is just the money that they had and this was the best that they could do. And that's shocking dark because it fucking swings for the fences with everything that it's trying to do and it has yeah. no money you know like that that's from last year at least that's the one that stands out for me and this well, year the last uh or the i don't know if it's the next movie or if it's the last movie but hell of the living dead is actually my favorite bruno Mattei movie and i want to see if yeah. it holds up because i haven't watched it in like years specifically once at least when we started doing may Mate, i'm like i'm not watching any Mate movies until we do may slash march Mate because i don't want my memory my fuzzy memory to to cloud like you know if i have a warm and fuzzy memory about how much fun i had watching hell of the living dead i don't want that to cloud my review for it now i want to be every bit as critical of the films that i do enjoy of his to see if i still do yeah you know and i'm kind of nervous about watching hell of the living dead again because i don't think i've watched that it feels like since college like really watched it you know oh yeah that's that's scary times well that's like like 20 uh, years almost i'm old as fuck yeah and i don't want to like uh, you know, bury the lead. Uh, but th- th- like, there are some Mate movies where I'm like, hey, um, not bad, especially with the lip dubbing, because you know, usually they were all in Italian. This one, holy shit, <laughs> like, it, it take you out of a fucking movie. <laughs> Well, and the copy that I sent to you for some reason yeah. was in Italian. Yeah. And it and, then, tur- and it turns out the only high definition copy I have is just Italian. I don't have an English version of that for some reason, which I got to get that corrected now. Yeah. And um, so I had to go back and dig out my old DVD. Like I had to go fishing for that DVD under stacks of just Jesus, just like like a hoarder stash, like a fucking dragon stashing yeah. like DVDs, you know, just picture that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just court hunched over. Yeah. Don't look at me like diving into my pile of dvds like fucking scrooge mcduck you know the ones that are yeah. I, if i have them on blu-ray those are on the shelves these are just the dvds that like i have no oh, reason to get rid you, of just yet you open up the vault and you go swimming through your dvds like gold coins <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> my, my more valuable stuff's on display because i'm weird <laughs> like that uh but anyway, I dug it out and I ripped it and I had it sent to you like from the like to our Google Drive like super fucking fast. I yeah. think I think I was like, okay, it's ripped here. I'm just giving you the whole fucking file. I'm not even going to shrink it. And again, yeah, yeah, it was not because yeah, that was a hefty file to download too. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> this is everything. 
<laughs> yeah, I um, just send it all. <laughs> but like, okay, like some of the English, like when they dubbed it in English, they maybe use inflection or maybe at least try to accurately represent the emotion of the actor. Not so much here. Not so much now. Do this you know just... how much money it costs to pay a voiceover actor to read lines like that? I, 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 I'm assuming a lot. Yeah. Do you know how much time it takes to spend just a little bit of time giving the actor some inflection or even letting them hear the way that the original actor delivered it if you have that capability. Do you have any idea how much of a pain in the ass that is? I, I do not. Not really. Honest. Not really at all. Actually, I'm, I'm being facetious. But anyway, oh. <laughs> voiceover artists are extremely fucking expensive and it's really difficult to talk to an actor and direct them if you're George Lucas. And, uh, you know, that's why they that's why they always end up having weird dub sessions. Some work better than others because the actors give a little more. Yeah, and then, then, yeah, this is not one of the ones where they gave a little bit more. Yeah, but there's still plenty of recognizable dubbed voices, which we have heard them give better performances on different movies. So it just goes to show how little of a fuck someone gives about getting a good dub for a movie called Rats Night of Terror. Yeah, uh, and... Uh, and- it's it's a hell of a good time uh, to, to watch these guys voice act. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying this film is good, but I still right. fucking enjoyed it. So I'm kind of curious where your problems lie, because I, I think you're trying to extend your pinky while you're sipping tea on this. And you got to remember, it's a movie about rats killing humans. All right. But. You know, it's supposed to be in 2015. Well, actually, it's supposed to be well after 2015. It's 200 years after 2015, but, you know. The way the human race is going right now, I actually believe that that's what it's going to look like 200 years from now. We just got done ass-fucking the rest of the world, so <laughs> that's that's pretty much what this movie is. <laughs> Us humans ass fucked the world, and now it's done. Well, that's Matt's review, so we're going to take the break. <laughs> going to play the Legion Patreon ad. We're going to have a little bit of music that's a little funky time for you. And when we come back, we'll have the trailer for Rats Night of Terror. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now... Back to the cutting room.
All right, I swear I did not rip that out of a porn. I swear. Lies. No, I swear, Matt, I did not rip that out of a porn. I swear. I think you ripped it off a of porn. I actually, I, I didn't. It's one of those grabs I found from Big Papa Bo. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like porn. It really <laughs> did sound like a lot of porn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nothing like this trailer. Rats. What do they want from us? Rats. Why are they man's enemy? Rats. They are watching and waiting. Rats. Their time has come. Why do rats repel us? What is it about those little furry bodies that's so frightening? Just think of them close to you. They're here. They're coming. God, no! Who could stop them, and how? Ah! Rats are here, under our feet, all around us. Come on, out in the open so I can smash you to pieces. Come to the slaughter. A strange rat from another community came into it. He was soon killed. And afterwards eaten, seething, teeming millions, their little red eyes gleaming with rage and hunger. And they are waiting for you. No! I don't want to die like that! No! Don't lead us alive! They'll kill us all! Kill all of us! For the last time, I'm warning you. Drop the guns, Kurt. Go on. You'll never get away. You two move that console and barricade yourselves in. No, I'll try to stop them. Rats, they're waiting for you. Tonight, because this is your night of terror. Here come. The rats! Yeah, I am pumped. Just once, I don't want it to have to be my night for terror. Why can't it be someone else's night for terror? I just want a vacation. Wow, you whine a lot. I know. Uh, <laughs> all right, rats, night of terror. Uh, first 20 minutes. Well, we open up with an overview of what's going on in the world, and that's our first clip. In the Christian year 2015, the insensitivity of man finally triumphs, and hundreds of atomic bombs devastate all five continents. Terrified by the slaughter and destruction, the few survivors of the disaster seek refuge under the ground. From that moment begins the era that will come to be called after the bomb, the period of the second human race. A century later, several men dissatisfied with the system imposed on them by the new humanity choose to revolt and return to live on the surface of the earth as their ancestors did. So yet another race begins, that of the new primitives. The two communities have no contact for a long period. The people still living below ground are sophisticated. They despise the primitives and regard them as savages. This story begins on the surface of the earth in the year 225 AB, after the bomb. All right, so this intro is probably one of the more ridiculous, like, info dump intros that you're going to get in one of these kind of sci-fi Mad Max wannabe knockoff type flicks. And yeah. And it's pretty out there. I mean, even, like, 2019 after the fall of New York was a bit more plausible than this, and that's saying something. <laughs> well, I just, like, it's because of the insensitivity of man is uh, <laughs> why <laughs> shit went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, blew everything up. I believe it's probably a mistranslation from I sure something much more severe, or at least I hope, because insensitivity does not cover mass genocide. Yeah, insensitivity doesn't quite explain, um, you know, launching a full out nuclear holocaust on the rest of the world. So yeah, that's not. That <laughs> yeah, global destruction cannot be described as the. Like, insensitivity being to blame in this case. Yeah, like, it sounds like you just have to take a sensitivity course at work and you'll be fine. You won't cause nuclear annihilation now. <laughs> right. All right. 
So we have a biker game. They're driving through the desert, and they come up to like what seems to be a ghost town. Uh, they're going through a bar. You know, they find a bar uh, in the bar that has like a mini fridge, and it's just full of rats. Then they go in, and they find food supplies. And what do they do? Much like any game, when of course supplies are scarcely low because of the end of the world, they start vastly wasting them, like a lot, throwing it around, dousing themselves in flour and seeds, and just I mean. Wow, it's just irresponsible at this point. Yeah, they're not acting like marauders who have never seen this much food and be a cause of celebration before ever in their life. Yeah, I mean, it really heavily seems like they're Republicans just from the way they treat this. No, so anyway, what, what I'm getting at, Matt, is I think they are so overjoyed to finally have an abundance of sustenance and a place to stay warm and out of the desert sun and yeah. call home. And they're showing their joy by being wantonly wasteful of the bounty. Well, I, I think that's a bad idea. I don't disagree. I'm just saying, like, they're a bunch of fucking dumbasses. Uh, well, OK, that that there we go. Now we're someplace. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. They're wasting food. And not only that. At, like some of them like threw food on the bed while they're rolling around in there yeah. and they were setting up food play that they didn't even deliver on which made me really really sad that I couldn't make right? you uncomfortable to watch that yeah that would have I would have been like god this is not quite the adventure I was looking for then they find uh, a body that's just covered in rats and after long arduous screaming from a whiny whiny person that will scream a lot more throughout this movie, whether they need to or not. They finally... Um, I feel like decide- you don't like this character. Yeah, I really don't. <laughs> I'm glad you know which character I'm talking about. Um, that night, they decide to go looking around. They break up into groups. And as they're, uh, as one of the groups is checking out the bar again, some guy notices that the mini fridge that was full of rats is now empty. Uh, they're looking around and they are trying to grab one of the rats and one, and this one bites on the guys by the face. Well, they tear it off his face and then shoot it and kill it. We tr- cut to another group and they find a corpse sitting in a chair all fucked up. Yeah, that looked uh, pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Hey, you know what? The corpse scenes are pretty cool. Uh, another group has, uh, they're like trying on clothes and a body falls out of the closet. And we're now we're just starting to see a ton of rats everywhere. Okay, so when I say it was cool, the skeletal remains, they at least tried to dress them up they were just as dusty as the surrounding that they're at the old abandoned building actually looks like it was you know just radiation dump ages ago and then this is just the structure that's left standing you know yeah. once the radiation cleared a couple of hundred years later you know yeah like i get it i don't know where the food came from and all of that but the the rest of the structure is great it These looks like buildings were out of the blast zone but are falling victim to time yeah and it was abandoned but why is that food still good there we find out later why? Yeah, but so now you got to think somebody made a base there, maybe. They'll come back. Yeah. Because obviously that food wasn't going to last any other way. Yeah, and there's so many beds. It's like a barracks, and it looks like it might be a military setup with some of the equipment and things. And I just don't understand why they are not just going to collect the stuff and get the fuck out. Like, that's what they should yeah. really be doing, but they're going to yeah. stay. Get your shit to get the shit and then get the fuck out of there. Yeah, because whoever left that shit there is going to come back. Yeah, Unless they're going to want dead. that shit. Yeah. Or though this gang strikes me as the type of gang, we're like, nope, now we found it, we'll defend it and kill anybody who comes back for it. Well, I'm sure that they're expecting that no one will be there because it's been their experience that there's this wasteland and this barren desert area, and they just feel like they lucked out and hit the mother load, but the problem is that stuff is way too fucking new for it yeah. to not be someone that could possibly be coming back, and they need to be on the lookout for that shit. Well, I agree with you there, yeah. Yeah, this didn't have to be rats causing the night of terror for these. This up and what these people, the decisions that they're making, I mean, this could be like a wrong turn situation where there's a bunch of like mutilated, weird looking, mutated red Hills types. have eyes type motherfuckers. Yeah, hills have eyes dudes living in this barren wasteland and radiation that collected all of this food that comes to get them, you know? So one other group, they find what looks like to be a command center. And one of them named Video thinks it's a video game. You can play it. While he's kicking everything on, he actually turns, or he actually kicking it around, he turns it on uh, by accident. This causes another room where two other people are in to power on, and these two peeps, they find plants and fresh water and a fresh water supply so and these plants are well taken care of like they are full and flush so what what the hell is that all about 
Right. <laughs> so given the evidence that we already discussed that there is clear evidence that someone is here or will be back for this stuff, now we see an active hydroponic lab growing fresh food of a yeah. vegetable variety. And it looks like from what this setup has got, it is replenishable and therefore someone will be here for this somehow. Yes. Somewhere we're, we're I mean, something's going on here and we, we really, they're not paying too much attention to what. No, they're so fucking awestruck by the luck of all of this sustenance around them in a barren wasteland that they completely ignore any semblance of discipline that was probably keeping them alive in said barren wasteland. They are not survivors of an apocalypse. They're like marauding kids looking to go pick up power converters at Hitachi Station. (laughs) You can waste time for your friends when this is all over. So anyway, uh, then, uh, after checking out the computer, it sends the inner instructions on to kill, like a kill instruction. Um... Then, uh, and then one of the people come in who were checking out the plants and the flowers, and they're all freaking out like they have to, we have to show you something. And that's the end of the first 20 minutes. All right, we've so covered not a it. whole ton of action, but a lot of setup. Yeah, and we've covered it. Everything that we need to know in the setup is these kids are making really stupid choices because they're so enamored with the setup that they've just wandered into, and they're super happy and they're not even questioning why all this shit is here, or even, you know, maybe they should take it and move it all somewhere else for themselves. Yeah, something. Yeah, they're not acting like... Why are there so many rats everywhere? Right. They're not acting like marauders that were surviving on their own by foraging through a wasteland. They're not acting like people that are watching their backs and being more careful. Like, how sparse is a population and how rare is this find that we're supposed to believe this, you know? I just... That's my thing where I'm like, okay, where is this supposed to sit for... Like, I'm just kind of going with it because I'm like, okay, it must be such a rare find that they're not even concerned about keeping a man awake at watch for stray nuclear powered monsters of some sort you know but so fuck it no one cares uh No, these kids give zero fucks about anything. Yeah, this group doesn't give a shit. Yeah, they they go into a barracks room and lock the door, and they think that's good enough, and then they all just fall asleep in this one room, and they're like, that's our security. Yeah, No one watches at all. As long as we're together, kids, we're we're all going to be okay. Yeah, they can all die quietly in unison in this one room. Yeah, in fact, we're all heavy sleepers, so they'll just pick us off one by one, and we'll all be fine. (laughs) Right. I think that's how they're pretty much stating it. So, um, we start the next 20 minutes with investigating this plant room in our next clip. The ones who came here ahead of us had discovered a way of artificially reproducing the things which once naturally grew on the surface of the earth. Look at this. Fruit, vegetables, flowers, virtually every kind of plant. And look at this. This machine distills and decontaminates rainwater. Would you believe it? Go ahead, taste it, Diana. What a delicious taste. (laughs) Not at all like that slime we've been forced to drink. It's incredible how anybody could do all this. Yeah, they certainly got themselves organized. With all their knowledge, they got themselves killed so easily. Yeah, there's a bunch of dead people there, but the stuff is all super fresh. So come on, somebody's maintaining yeah. this still. Can we, can we, come on, everyone. Let's put two and two together here. <laughs> Anybody? Use your deductive reasoning. Come on. They, Anybody? They clearly have been taught in the American school system. <laughs> they really have. Yeah. Yeah. The, these people are definitely using, like, the, they're not using the metric system at all. <laughs> Well, beyond that, they don't have any kind of cognitive reasoning. No. I mean, it is just hilarious. They, they, they These are the kind of people who tell you the Civil War was about states' rights. So, Wow, they are grossly misinformed. Exactly. So uh, they take all the bodies outside and they burn them. And then that night, Video tries to get some from uh, a woman named Chocolate, who's a person of color. So that's problematic? Yeah, did you recognize the actress? I, I was she no, unless uh, was she in the um what's that last f- uh the the Giallo film we just saw? No, no. no. You would okay, have seen I thought her. That face looked like familiar. You would have seen her in Demons. I know that you watch Demons because it's the one yes. with the movie theater where all of the people yep, get possessed. Right. Yeah, now I, I can I right, I remember now. Yep. Yes, she is one of the prostitutes or as Tony actually says in the movie. Holy shit, she's a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, that was a good movie. I did enjoy that movie. Yeah. 
So that that's what she's from. The actress's name is Greta Greta, and the name for her, unless she chose it herself, is atrocious. I'm assuming yeah. that she chose her own name because it seems as though everybody here is referred to by a name that they fully accept. Yeah, I, I really And they're a tight-knit do. crew where there's no other indication in this crew that they are racist. I think it's just Claudio Fergassi, who wrote it, <laughs> might be. All right. Or so the people anyway. who changed her name in the dub to chocolate are racist? I don't know, but it's fucking racist. <laughs> it's it's very racist. So anyway, he wants to get some on with her because she had actually made a bet with him that she, you know, he could knock the boots if he figured out a way to turn on that computer, which he did. Well, she says she's tired, but they make out, and she says later on, and he's like, oh, okay. At least she warmed his sleeping bag a little bit, right? Yeah, right. So uh, then that night, they're all in bed. Uh, they're all trying to sleep, and another couple are zipped up in a sleeping bag and full on just banging it out and just being loud as fuck. I just want Everyone- to I just want to state that these are not like your usual big fucking comfy huge room bags. These are like No, this is like a are- one person bag and two people fit into it. Right. And they're like the the fitted sleeping bag too. They're they're, yeah. they're like a not necessarily a mummy but like a semi mummy fitted sleeping bag. Listen to me Mr. Camp and Gear know it all. Yeah, li- listen to you, man. <laughs> Jesus. I was listen, a fucking- to e- listen to Mr. Eagle Scout over over here. I actually made it to life rank. I didn't make it to Eagle. I got kicked out for being an atheist, but that's a whole different story. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about that yeah, right now. Yeah, but um, so it's it's about the size of a semi mummy sleeping bag where it's fitted to go down around your legs and kind of tapered around your arms, and it's supposed to be a much snugger thing, and it's like super filled, you know, yeah. like to be really really warm for low low rated temperatures, and they're they're slamming it out in this military grade semi mummy fucking like sleeping bag, and I don't know how they're both fitting in there, and I'm fucking impressed that they're able to get it on in there. I, you know what? I think everybody should be. It's it's a an impressive feat. <laughs> right. So instead of complaining about it, like we're about to hear happen, just fucking yeah. sit back, relax, and watch the show. Well, they, anyway, yeah, they do uh, all complain about it. And the leader tells them, all right, you know, go outside and fuck each other and leave it the rest of us alone because this is getting insane. You know, I th- we have an early morning of wasting more food and being more dickish tomorrow and not knowing how to ration our supplies. Yes, all of that is absolutely true. Yeah. So, um... They uh, he tries to get out, but the zipper's kind of stuck, and it, and the guy's name's Lucifer. He's freaking out now, trying to get out of this, almost breaking his lovely lady's shoulder. When finally another guy really calmly just takes the zipper and unzips it, and it unzips. And Lucifer says, "How do you do that?" And he goes, "Simple. I'm not." He, he doesn't say this, but pretty much infers. He goes, "I'm not a raving lunatic, dumbass, rage idiot." So, and, uh, yeah, he so says this, patience is what he actually yeah, yeah, says. Yeah. But you, uh, you could tell it was in the tone of his voice. Right. Well, it's like Lucifer- how I tell you to have tact. <laughs> oh, don't, don't be, don't be such a foul mouth fuckwad. <laughs> <laughs> right that's that's yeah, basically yeah, what i said when what, i said that's what you're, you're when i say that you need tact that's exactly what i'm saying you get it i got it i got it you got my uh, tone even over skype yeah yeah see uh so anyway the guy's name's lucifer and he's that old pissed off and he says he's gonna go ahead and uh uh fuck it. everyone kind of laughed at him and so they're outside he's outside with this lady he says he's just mumbling he's gonna kill everyone because he's a big fucking baby if you think about and, it he's kind of not wrong he does end up killing everyone <laughs> he does, yeah. Well, then fucking his lady says, hey, I'll help you out. And uh, she pretty much gets him going again. And so they start fucking anyway. I think and, that was uh, more for her benefit because she was left unfulfilled. Yes. And also probably sick of hearing him bitch constantly. Yeah. The best uh, way to shut him up is by putting something of hers in his mouth. Yes, exactly. Um. So then we see the dude uh, who had found the plants. He's checking on them. You know, he's eating some fruit that he's found from them. And he sees a rat and he's here noises uh after boning lucifer says he pretty much wants to go again but uh the missus pretty much tells him that you know he's so good at sex it, that's so many words. She pretty much so good at sex that she's tired and that she just needs to rest. And he's just too good almost for one woman, which almost any man would take as a compliment. But no, because he can't give his way. Big fucking baby boy gets up and stomps off like a little fucking having a hissy fit. Actually, she could have said it in another way that probably would have would have subdued him a little bit better. She could have told him that his Jimmy runs deep, so deep it put her butt to sleep. Oh, yeah. See, uh, that's true. 
That's true. I don't know, but you know, who knows how he feels about it? <laughs> right. He's still going to respond the exact same way because he's a fucking child. Like, mm-hmm. take the compliment and the wind, bro, and go snuggle yeah. with that fucking hot girl that is in love with you, apparently, yeah. and you know, chill. You know, you know, one of us normal guys, if we heard that, would just give ourselves a pat on the back, post it to social media, and skip down the street. Uh, so then uh, Lucifer decides he's going to go find some drinks. Um, the dude with the plants actually gets attacked by rats and see him. They just start coming down the tubes, falling into the clean water. So that's pissing him off. And then he gets attacked and pretty much murdered by all that shit. So, uh, you know, sorry about your luck. Once they settle in for the night, once they all go to sleep and the fucking happens and then they get kicked out, yeah. they do a really good job of these sequences of building the tension. Even though you know it's just going to be a bunch of fucking rats attacking people, you yeah. still are like, God damn, this is getting creepy. And you're yeah, everything, really questioning everything. their choices is to go out of the room away from everybody else to fuck. Well, at least the action picks up now. You know, that first 20 minutes kind of was like we're waiting for fucking the grass to grow. Yeah. Action picks up, but also suspense builds really well in this. I'd feel better if the dub was better. Just sorry, but that's just me. Um, Then Lucifer finds drunk. He finds a payphone. He starts yelling at it because... He's an idiot. Then he sees some rats all around their bikes. He starts yelling at them. Uh, The uh, blonde girl kept screaming. She's having issues sleeping because, you know, she's scared of everything. Um, Then we see a rat and it's eyeing Lucifer's girlfriend while she's asleep in her sleeping bag. Uh, Lucifer's walking in the streets. He's drunk and he drops his bottle down a manhole, down a sewer hole. And then he falls. He kind of gets stuck. Like like his legs are hanging out and his arms are holding on. And his bottom is kind of falling into the hole as he holds on. And then we cut to a rat chews its way into the sleeping bag. And then we see the lady can't undo it. And she's being eaten inside the bag. Up up her uh, her hoo-ha. Up her special area. Her her hoot nanny. Yeah, but we don't actually see it. It's all heavily implied because we see the rat. very heavily. Implied. Yeah, it's yeah. all very heavily implied. Not that I need to see that. Thank you very no. much. But yeah, I don't. I don't really want to know what that's about either. Yeah, I'm this is sad. this is Bruno Mattei showing the tact. I wish Matt would. Wow, Jesus. All right. I mean, fuck you too, <laughs> dick. <laughs> As he's trying to get out of the manhole, a ton of rats fall on Lucifer. Uh, as we have to be cut back to him, and he falls down. Uh, the, the rat, uh, while well, in the sleeping bag, she's being eaten. Uh, the group hears her scream. They go looking for her. Uh, they find her. They think she's dead, and uh, they think Lucifer did it, or at least the leader does. And then we see a rat comes crawling out of her mouth. So they, uh, the, it's heavily implied the rat ate all the way up through there. So, oh. Yeah, this is something, a motif that uh, Bruno Mattei revisits. We've seen it in some of his later films that we've already covered, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that just seems to be eaten from the inside out. Yeah, I guess that seems pretty bad. It's probably something that gets to him. Well, that's his MO. It's something that he heavily implies in such a way as to make you think that it's going in one way, and then it shows you sort of pretty much coming out the other, so it heavily implies what may have just happened, and it makes your imagination do the heavy lifting for the movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But why do I have to do all the fucking work for this movie? (laughs) Just fucking give me the brain dead gore already. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I don't want to have to use my imagination. What am I, five? I want to watch a guy mow down a room full of zombies with a lawnmower strapped to him. Come on. Do it. Give this to me. Don't make me beg. Again, I would say that this is probably him showing tact, but more than likely it is essentially. Yeah, it's budget. And he's just like, this is the cheapest way to gross you out by making you do all the heavy lifting for it. Yeah, you're you're probably right on that one. Uh, yeah, it's like a workout for your imagination, Matt. Thank them later. Yeah, right? I'd rather not. So then another guy, he, uh, that other guy from the, uh, checking out the fruit and stuff, he comes up and he's all covered in the rats and uh, they had to light him on fire pretty much, leader does, just to put him out of his misery. Decent um, flamethrower action. Flame thrower. Decent you know flamethrower action in this film. And, and like I said, my, my main issue with this whole entire movie has been constantly the, uh, just the dubbing. Fucking that flamethrower is pretty fucking sweet. Let's, <laughs> let's just fucking be real. That's a fr- fucking sweet ass flamethrower. They paid for that flamethrower and god damn it, they are gonna use it in this and movie I, and they fucking do. And I thank them for it. 
It uh, was fucking epic. Honestly, I know it's probably really expensive to use a fucking flamethrower all the goddamn time, but why were we not firing that off into the fucking desert just to show it off, people? Come right? on. Jesus Christ. Come on, people. When you got a flamethrower, you shoot out a lot of fucking flames on film because it looks awesome. Well, the blonde girl I really hate, she starts having her paperclips moment again. In fact, her name throughout this whole rest of the movie is Paperclips because she's constantly having a paperclips moment. Oh, I grabbed a clip burns. of that. I, I, I oh. knew you were going to comment on that freak out, man. Yeah, cool. Who in the fuck took my paperclips? Wow. That's some heavy shit right there. Yeah. Heavy shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know but, but that, that. That's acting that you can feel. Yeah, that's the best acting for the voice acting in the film. Who in the fuck took my paperclips? <laughs> Love it. Um, Ages old callback. Yes, right. Uh, so then they hear noises and they start shooting all over the place and then they go inside uh, uh, to go find Lucifer. And that ends that 20 minutes. So an action packed second half 20 minutes here, uh, which is uh, all right by me. And they're building up decent suspense and they're making you see even more. That these fucking kids are making even dumber decisions. Yeah. You know, they should have gone off to another room that they could latch up and just spend in there. But the guy would have still stormed off on his own because apparently yeah, he's a fucking child. The buildup of the suspense is great. When the actual attacks happen, the best that you can film a bunch of rats at size attacking someone is kind of being done here. Um, the only other kind of rat attack that I've seen that is more realistic was when rats were actually attacking an actor because he had just burned some of them for real on film because they didn't know how to fake it. Jesus. <laughs> and then like some other rats just start leaping and attacking and, and like really, really attacking and going after the actor. Uh, that is the most realistic like actual rat attack I've seen. Uh, this is basically people covered in mostly white rats that are like lab rats. <laughs> That are spray painted black. If you really look at the fur, it looks like it's fucking all matted up and, and nasty. They tried to make them look dirty. They just basically painted all the rats black, which means that it was harder for them to show on film and they'd have to light them even more. Yeah. I don't know why they had to do that. Also, white rats look more amazing covered in fake blood. So that's a total failure and a miss right there. Well, I get really sad for rats in movies, man. They constantly get mistreated. Ooh, we need to watch the Willard movies. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, how bad was that for him that's <laughs> more recent too where you're supposed to like fucking know better <laughs> well that was the the more recent one is cg but the 70s one is what i was talking about oh yeah okay i would <laughs> suppose then yeah that might be bad <laughs> yeah i think it's willard and ben there's two different movies from the 70s on that yeah so anyway yeah the the, the rats are very clearly dyed in, and or spray painted and did you, I don't know if it was in this sequence, but in one of the sequences, I noticed there's like two or three half painted rats. Yeah. Like <laughs> what, half painted white or are they half painted fucking black? I think they're half painted black. I think they were running out of paint and they dipped the back end of the rat in there and then set them down, but never repainted the front end. <laughs> Or they I ran mean, out of the spray dye and it just ran out after they spray painted its ass. Yeah. It looked like a fucking guinea pig, I swear to dude. It was like the back half of it was painted black and the front half of it was just a regular white rat. Jesus Christ. It's at this point, like 40 minutes into the film, where I can't stop fucking laughing and I'm having a blast watching this. Because I'm like, this is so dumb. I'm Let's go. This is cool. Yeah, let's, let's just go. <laughs> Be done with it. Right. I'm like, you know what? This is nice of the leapest time let's just have fun it and it's gotten to that point right yeah <laughs> so uh i mean like only if they had large rats show up at some point would it be that ridiculous oh my god yeah and like the rats were live rats but they were supposed to look larger yeah that would be great <laughs> right <laughs> that is where i would uh that's that's where i'd be like all right well now i'm in you've won me you won me over <laughs> <laughs> all it takes is Burt I. Gordon level of effects to make Matt get all warm and fuzzy. That's that's right. That's, now I'm into it. <laughs> this is this is how I live. You hit me where I live. <laughs> Quite literally, because that's what Giant Spider Invasion was shot. It was Wisconsin, and that's what they did. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesus Christ, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, go Packers! Um, so, okay, we start the next 20 minutes. The group is looking for Lucifer. Uh, and they open one door where they keep hearing some noise, and it's apparently we don't see it, but it's full, filled with rats. So they lock the shut the door. Um, the again more paper clips moments, and uh, oh, I grabbed some of those. Oh, okay, go ahead. Who in the fuck took my 
my paper clips. Powerful stuff. I mean, she is really scared. Yeah, this was uh, this was a bunch of people screaming though. You got to listen again. You gotta, you'll hear it real careful. That, like like there's just the predominant female voice, but then you'll actually hear the the gentlemen that are trying to pull her away from the closet screaming too. Okay. All right. Who all right. the fuck took my paper clips? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing acting. Yeah. It, it makes you feel. <laughs> then they find Lucifer dead, and they light him up. You know his body up because it's covered with rats. Then they check their bikes, and their bikes' tires have all been chewed up, so they're pretty much useless. Um, there's almost a mutiny between the group, but the leader's able to calm everyone down. And then Screaming Girl screams as they find a spider, because they're, they're starting to barricade the door, the, the building they're in now. And she sees a spider and starts freaking out again, and f- and finally the leader slaps her. So, there you go. Because um, that's the way that they, you always make someone who has some kind of anxiety or traumatic experience causing a PTSD response or something that they're just screaming uncontrollably that the best thing that you can always do is to strike them across the face with an open hand yeah right yeah I mean it reminds me of the producers where he slaps him and he's freaking out he goes now I'm in pain <laughs> he starts freaking out even more it's like I never got that part I mean, like, like, yeah, people used to do that where they try to bring you out of it with a good strike to the face. Now I just want to punch you in the fucking mouth and I'm still freaking out. Thanks. And I'm still having issues. Yeah. Sorry. I just Um, had to vent. No, not a problem. Anyway, they get done boarding up the place and that's our next clip. That feels safe now. That's the best I can do. I I don't think there's anything that could keep those rats out if they want to get in. It's amazing how determined they seem to be. Supposed to be dumb vermin. But how did they manage to kill the others? Lucifer, Lilith, and Noah. They're so stupid. But what do they have against us? We've done nothing to them. Maybe this instinct to kill has been awakened. Though there's no way of knowing how. Only I'm certain it happened. Well, you can take it from me, and this is the truth. Whatever happened only matters to us, alive. The dead don't care. (laughs) Years ago, when I lived with my family in the mountains, our cave was attacked by a pack of hungry rats. They didn't attack us. They devoured all the supplies we had. But these rats here, they don't seem interested in food. He's right, Kurt. They don't eat the grain. It's us they want to eat. Mind finding something else to talk about? You're lowering everyone's morale. We're superior, aren't we? Once it was like that, maybe. Your attitude seems as negative as Myrna's. You're right. Humans think they're superior. Possessors of a finer intelligence. Certain that they can rule the Earth. Forcing rats to stay in holes underground or in the sewers. In the sewers? Did they always live in places like that underground? Before the civilized world was destroyed by a group of crazy scientists, vermin lived entirely underground, Hmm. in the sewers beneath the great cities. I read that in a book. And what other misinformation did you read in it? One thing I remember clearly. Their communities were Exclusive. They didn't accept intruders to their world. If a strange rat from another community came into it, he was soon killed. And afterwards eaten. And how were they aware of the difference? I thought all Burman were the same. You're mistaken. There are many different types, Diana. And they can tell by the smell of their urine. (laughs) <laughs> rats who can smell different kinds of urine i never heard such shit whoever wrote that book you read was writing for assholes as gullible as you are <laughs> you ever hear anything so stupid before i suppose because you've all peed your pants with fright the rats know who you are <laughs> i don't think that's funny even if The rats think we're intruding on them. This place is ours and we're hanging on to it. So, okay, now they start hearing rats and they all of a sudden realize, shit, we forgot to do one window. Fuck. I mean, 
these guys really do suck for surviving so fucking long in a wasteland. Yeah, they are making the dumbest fucking mistakes you could possibly yeah. want. So then um, the rats start pouring in on the window on the lady Denise. They're able to save her and pull her away, but she's bit to shit. Um, they said they need some water, and then the guy goes, fuck, I forgot to grab water before we boarded up. Holy shit! What else did you forget? There should be a checklist for your survival that includes get a supply of water. Yeah, yeah. That's right? a basic human necessity. You're dumb. Jesus Christ. They all deserve yeah. to die. I mean, I, I agree. They really do all deserve to die. At this, so, at this point, uh, I'm rooting for the rats. I am really rooting for the rats here. It just sounds like the best way for us all to go. Um, so then the group decides they'll all go down to the cellar to get water, except for a shotgun dude who almost started a mutiny earlier. He gets, uh, so they leave him behind with Paperclip's girl, and he starts getting all friendly with her, saying that he can help her survive. The term you're looking for there is he gets a little rapey with her, telling her he that he will help her to survive. It's he, gross. He gets, he gets very rapey with her. They all are downstairs, and they find that the water supply has been now polluted by a whole shit ton of rats. Um, they go to the stairs to leave, and now the stairs are all covered in rats. So there's, and now they're starting to come down the tubes. We see that uh, they they fucked they fucked around and they found out pretty much. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why the rats were there and not eating food. It may be a stupid fucking reason and a really bad writing, but it's still a yeah. reason. So here we are. Uh, everyone's sort of freaked out right now. So the guy decides, the leader decides to use his uh, flamethrower. Well, now it's broken. So he grabs like a, a steel weapon of some sorts, wraps it, and lights it on fire. And they decide to try to just, he's just trying to keep the rats at bay. Of course, one guy gets snagged down and he's being eaten alive. Uh, but the rest of them are able to get away. Uh, when they get up to the door, the paper clips and shotgun won't let them in. They're going to leave them outside to die. The shotgun's having a real good time with that. Then Chocolate says she thought she sees a rat. Of course, this makes paper clips freak out. And she knocks into Shotgun. And Chocolate's able to get a weapon and open up the door. Uh, so then uh, the leader's going to get ready to kill Shotgun. But paper clips begs him not to. That he's only really trying to help. I mean, really just the weakest fucking argument I've ever heard for a guy trying to kill somebody. So then the leader decides to let Shotgun live. But not before he gets a good swift kick right in the right in the nards uh right in right in the dick so which he deserves and that ends that 20 minutes so the group's getting picked apart these raps are somewhat smart apparently because you know look what they're doing so uh they're you know they're picking off this group one by one they can set traps so you sound you seem it seems pretty bleak for our heroes yeah, these rats are super intelligent. It's like uh, the phase four ants, only with rats. They're working together as a team, and they are essentially herding the people into various kill zones for them to be able to swarm them. Yeah. I wonder, at this point, while I'm watching the movie in the storyline, you also wonder if perhaps somehow the rats are tending this food as a trap. It's a honeypot for these animals to come in to where they can swarm them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe they're like, wow, we're not going to get rid of this food because fucking humans keep showing up. Well, and that's, they're not, what they eat is humans. Or well, or meat sacks keep co showing up. How right. about that? Yeah, they, <laughs> they eat the meat sacks. They don't want the actual grain and all that other stuff, but I'm sure they'll eat it yeah. if they have to. But, but the, the, meats, the meat sacks seem to like that stuff, and they keep showing up for it, so... Why get rid of it? And if you think why eat it? And if you think about it, the stuff that they have in stock is kind of like what you would be feeding livestock, like grains and things like that, to help them fatten out the meat and make them taste better. Yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> you know, so, some of the veggies and stuff for the same reason. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is we we kind of do the same thing, don't we? Yeah, as as humans. Right. <laughs> so the question is: Is it these rats that are fortifying their food with vitamins before they go ahead and devour them, or is it? some other being that has a lab for that purpose. Yeah, right? Hmm. 
Oh, wow. Let's find out. <laughs> so we uh, start the next 20 minutes. Uh, we hear screaming and you can hear like a guy screaming and we see a boot just standing there and some blood around. And uh, so it might be the stairs guy they're thinking, the guy who got eaten on the stairs. They go to check it out. And when they get out there, the racks are ignoring them. So they all decide they're going to get out of there except for Bite Lady who can't really move, Denise. And they, they the leader says, we'll leave her here and we can get out out and get more stuff and then go help her uh so they decide they're gonna cross kind of this large part of the building um video he makes it across first we see bite lady she starts getting up then this guy who i called forehead he has a symbol in his forehead forehead and the ladies they all walk across so then everyone gets across and the leader's gonna go when all of a sudden the sound starts up and it throws the rats into a frenzy um, the leader runs across and he makes it. Uh, as they head to a di- uh, to uh, a bigger room, um, Shotgun Guy tells Paperclips Girl that it's time to save their own skins. Uh, they find the guy who was bitten on the stairs and, and what we thought was eating, he was standing there. And he turns around and he is all fucked up. And he falls to the ground. All of a sudden his body starts getting bigger and bigger and we see rats tearing out of it before it blows up and blows rats everywhere. Uh, that was actually... Then awesome. <laughs> That was actually really cool. I thought he was like, they're going to control his body and shit like that. But when they made his body, and then I thought when he fell to the ground, it was just rats coming out of him. I thought that was it. But then when he blew up, I was like, damn, that's an effective way. Yeah, they just kept escalating it. And it's like, okay, so that's where you spent all the budget was exploding a body filled with rats. I just feel bad for the rats that were exploded in that thing. (laughs) That's that's an excellent ability. That's an excellent uh, rat uh, ascension tool right there. (laughs) Exploding body filled with rats. That's an excellent rat delivery system. Yeah, this is why I enjoy this movie quite a bit. This was kind of (laughs) cool. So then Bite Girl comes up from behind them, and they grab her. Paperclips Girl and Shotgun, uh, they run away, and they find out they're in their big, the big tank-type car that uh, was with the motorcycle gang. And they're trying to leave, and uh, he's firing, uh, Shotgun Guy's firing the big machine gun on top of there to make the others stay down, and then the gun stops working. So then he goes down, grabs Paperclips Girl, and holds her hostage with a grenade. Right before Leader's ready to throw down his gun, and and give up uh rats start dropping it and apparently they found their way into the tank the guy lets paper clips girl go but she falls into the tank and then he drops the grenade and it blows them both up uh we see that the denise girl she disappeared the bike girl she disappeared and now they all start looking for her and they're all freaking out looking for her and she finally says that She's not she's not going to go that way like getting eaten alive so she slits her wrists killing herself. Um the leader <laughs> ends News up flash, being the, it's going to take longer for you to bleed to death and if they get to you in time you are still going out that way. Well the leader finds her and she is being eaten by a ton of the rats and he freaks out has his own paper clips moment and ends that ends that 20 minutes. The bleakness Woo. that this film goes to from like zero yeah. to like super fucking bleak in this just killing everyone off all at once ending is pretty Pretty fucking cool. This is where yeah, the film man. wins me over, and I'm having a blast, and I don't care that it's a bunch of rats killing people. <laughs> well, we go into the final 20 minutes now. Uh, they're all freaking out over the body of Denise. Apparently, Denise is probably the most liked person on the team. Um, uh, the one guy keeps asking why the, the leader shot her because there's gunshots all over because he was shooting the rats. And they're like, Yeah, you probably killed her actually by doing that. And it's like, eh, Well, I mean, she was pretty fucked already. So I highly doubt that. So then they all run back to the command center and they find like a little speaker box that plays a message in our final clip. Two, three, testing. I recorded this on the 12th day of Operation. Return to light. The time is 9.15 Federal System. And this is Experimental Station Delta 2. We are three days from the rendezvous with Omega 1. They're coming to save us. But the meeting may never take place, as this whole mission is a failure. It looks as if we shall never see Return to Light. The measures taken by our scientists to overcome the damage of pollution, radioactivity, and prolonged exposure to ultraviolet rays were correct. And the failure is in no way their responsibility. 
It is due to a species of small animal long thought to be extinct, Raptus norregicus, commonly known as rats. They populated the sewers of cities before the Holocaust, feared by man as carriers of fatal and often incurable diseases. They have proved to be a dangerous enemy, a recent mutation having sharpened their intelligence to an amazing degree. The trouble started when we began to discard our special protective clothing as the radiation level decreased. It was no longer necessary. And that was when the rats began to attack, killing surprising numbers of us and feeding on our flesh. They had discovered their perfect diet. Never before has a creature so small hunted man as once he hunted for food in the forests of our history. Perhaps they resented the intrusion of man into their underground world, where we were forced to take refuge in the early days, when the surface area became totally uninhabitable, burned black without a scrap of vegetation. The rats disappeared for several years down there, and we all assumed that they had died out. What had happened was that they had taken man's place on the outside, suffered from exposure to radiation, strengthened from it, and returned to claim their territory. They came in hordes. My companions are all dead, killed by the rats. And I know my end is near. Brothers, when you find and listen to this recording, I, I will have reached my destination and be within the doomed Delta II computer center. And I must warn you to remain where you are in the control room. It is the only place where you will be safe. The surface area is overrun by rats. They kill any who are not of the same race as themselves. Remember, human beings are their food, and they will eat you if they are, if you are caught. Your only hope is if the Oma team can reach you before the rats. Remember to... They're here. They're pouring in. So, there are people like us still living under the ground. It's incredible. They've taken over the Earth. Yes, everything that was ours. I don't understand. Why do they keep attacking us? Because they consider it their right to take everything that's ours. And we... We are now intruding on them. But the book, the book you told us about never said anything about human beings. It said the enemies of rats were other rats. Nothing about killing and feeding on us, Deus. That man spoke of mutation. I believe that under the surface something terrible is happening. Something that has pushed these men to come out on the surface to try to escape from their destiny. Whatever the cause of this massacre, the point is, we're being caught right in the middle. Men under the surface and rats here. We find the rats are busting at the door. Uh, and then we see some peeps are coming up from underground in special suits. Um, so they're using uh, it what appears to be gas to settle down or kill the rats as they are. Um, rats are starting to get into the command center, though. Video and Chocolate kind of barricade themselves behind this makeshift barricade while Forehead and the leader hold the door. But everything busts down on them, including the body of the of Lucifer's girlfriend. All of it comes down, attacks, and they kills the leader and Forehead. The rats, however, start dying and disappearing because of the gas. So the two, Video and Chocolate, they start choking on the gas. They try to get out. They're kind of surrounded by all the these people in the, in the universe forms and they pass out they wake up to the people looking at them and they assume they are they ask that they're the people from delta 2 which they nod yes and chocolate goes into how you know she had family who read to her from the bible that all people would be you know uh, friendly with one another and uh, so they're all happy <laughs> about it yeah they're all happy about it until one of them removes their mask and yeah they're rat people screaming ensues roll credits So 
Also, that big grin that Rat has when he pops off the gas mask finally, and I'm assuming he's a he, so I apologize if I was wrong. Did you just assume that Rat's gender? Yeah, well, that Rat's grin is a grin where he goes, oh, we got someone who read the Bible. They're dumb. Yeah, they're like, oh, you read the Bible, huh? All right. Either that or he's like, ooh, you look delicious. Because the rats yeah. are the ones that were holding this whole thing. This this, yes. this room that they're holding, they actually just go underground and just are now, still trying to reclaim their underground home. And the tiny rats that haven't evolved, I don't think they're their pets. I think they're like their pilot fish. But they kind of kill those rats. So I'm thinking the person talking in that video or in that speaker that's a rat person. They have the ability to speak. And those rats are, are a danger to maybe even them because they're feral rats and they haven't evolved. All right. I didn't take that into consideration. I didn't take that into consideration because I was too busy falling off my couch, laughing my ass off because I don't know how, but I <laughs> forgot about this ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where it's a rat person. I, I think it's so dumb. I blocked it out. The whole time I'm sitting here, I'm like, it's going to be a rat person. <laughs> <laughs> right, but like, I think it's so dumb I blocked it out, Matt. I seriously did. Yeah. I was laughing so fucking hard. I'm not being facetious. I'm not exaggerating. I fell off my goddamn couch laughing. Just slid right the fuck off. Why not? <laughs> It's so fucking dumb. Like, <laughs> I was so having so much fucking fun with this movie that that ending, I'm like, oh, fuck off. And I'm still laughing at it and having a fun time. <laughs> I mean, some rat person. That was the sound the rat person made. <laughs> Yeah, it's so fucking dumb. I loved it. <laughs> I know it was great. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty solid ending. <laughs> <laughs> We've watched a lot of films where we can really talk about how well crafted it is and really discuss the quality of the film and how it really moves us and brings emotions out and makes us really think and ponder what's going on. But deep down inside, we just want to see a rat take off a gas mask <laughs> that we, we clearly see- know it's a rat and no one else in the movie can tell. Yeah, we just want to see rat people um, who have helped take over the earth after humanity was um uh was uh how how they put it uh after humanity was unsympathetic or no uh no, insincerity insensitivity yeah, or, yes. insensitivity yeah do I like seeing rats take over after we were too insensitive to the earth. <laughs> Yeah, I would actually say that the rats are doing a better job tending to the earth. They're leaving it pretty much as it is. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. And they're even killing off the rats that are maybe feeding too much who don't know how to save shit. Dude, this movie's so dumb. It's fun. Come on. I mean, it is fun. I just, man, I could, like, every time I tried to get into it, if I had those fucking, those English dubs, my man. I had to put my pinky out. Well, you're lucky you got the English dubs that you could even clip four clips yes. because I almost just found you the subtitles and sent them to you and said, figure it out. Great. Then I would have been reading. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we know you can't do that. So I'm trying to save you. Thank you very much. I was born to watch. I, listen, I was hired to watch movies, not to read them. All right. Or else this <laughs> be a book club and not a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it can be both. Look at the VD clinic. That's what they do. That's true. That's true. It's a book club and a podcast. Podcast. Well, we're a movie podcast and a book club podcast. Well, it's it's a book club podcast and a movie podcast whenever they do the scheduling that way. Yeah, well, I don't want to hear it from you anymore, all right? That's <laughs> what we are. That's I, what they are. I I'm think, talking about us. I think Cinema PsyOps should become Cinema and Coffee Shop PsyOps. <laughs> we should sit down and we should read a book and then talk about our feelings, Matt. I give you exactly 10 minutes before you get tired of that shit. <laughs> Dude, I already feel sick just talking about it as a joke <laughs> yeah <laughs> like god damn no i'm just joking everybody let's just stop all right <laughs> <laughs> i just want to say that i would love to read books and share my innermost thoughts with a person in, in a regular routine type situation like a book yeah. club it's uh-huh. just not you no yeah no that's not that's not uh for me uh <laughs> you would you would all be really sick of that shit <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're going to play the Geek Radio Daily promo. We're going to have a little bit more funky music. And when we come back, we will have some PSYOP news. Are you having trouble keeping up with the ebbs and flows of modern geekery? Is the real world holding you back from knowing what is happening in the geeky world? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends, gaming group, and loved ones, Geek Radio Daily presents daily informational sessions brought to you by the wonderful Billy Flynn, the Flynnstress, and podcasting's Rich Siegfried. 
They contain such helpful segments as history, geek birthdays, box office results, the latest in DVD and Blu-ray, video game and comic releases. Why, they also have a Sweekly show hosted by the wonderful Billy Flynn and the Flynnstress, which includes interviews and commentary. And to make sure you are informed, Geek Radio Daily also provides you with your daily dose of geek news to make sure you know more than that jerk know-it-all Steve. Visit us at geekradiodaily.com. That's right, Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. Now available in fine Corinthian leather. suckered in on that that was a good jam yeah man that wasn't that bad yeah that royalty free website or not royalty free but free for the legion podcast to use because we have a subscription for it or some kind of a royalty thing that we have worked out i don't know how it fucking works all i know is that bo has it he told me i can use it i'm using it (laughs) (laughs) i'm finding decent stuff in it is making me happy wow as long as you're happy Really, that's the only thing that matters about this podcast, because this is my hobby with which I let you participate. This is actually very true. <laughs> <laughs> and you could do that best by giving me some psyop news. Uh, this one comes from Paul. All right. That's our so, local boy, yeah. Paul, huh? Yeah, local boy, Paul. Um, Balching eyed mugshot of drug suspect caught hiding burnt glass pipe up her backside. Of course, you're going to pick that one. I mean, you want to do a little head. ass play? It's either that or the guy who killed his neighbor and served the, his heart up to people for dinner. So, I mean, that's the one I would have picked, but that's just me. I don't know. Sometimes you're weird to tell because I would have read that and been like, well, now I'm bummed out. <laughs> This is not the sickness with which I am down. (laughs) A suspected drug user posed for a wide-eyed mugshot after she was allegedly caught with the used glass meth pipe up her backside. You want to do a little ass play? Ooh, is that me getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? Well, this would be a glass pipe. Wiley West, 22, was arrested on February 28th after another woman called police to say that Weiss was caught, was causing trouble in her apartment. Cops who arrived at the property in Wichita Falls, Texas, discovered Weiss was already being sought on an earlier drugs possession charge and arrested her. The woman who called police on Weiss said she was in possession of a meth pipe, but a preliminary search failed to turn up the drug paraphernalia. Officers who took Weiss to jail noticed she kept fidgeting and asked her if she was concealing anything. Uh, Old cops are bumbling dummies. It is claimed. (laughs) <laughs> she allegedly said no, although a subsequent strip search said is said to have uncovered the glass pipe uh, she is said to have concealed within her body. Ooh, is that me getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? It is unclear if Weiss's mugshot was taken before or after an officers uncovered the glass pipe. KJTL reported that Weiss has now been arrested 18 times, including seven arrests for drug charges, five for assaults, and one apiece for aggravated robbery, burglary, theft, to and hell with evading the police. arrest. To hell with the police. I'm going to stockpile all my guns because cops don't help you. You can't she pay was arrested bail. Twice oh, on- I could probably fix that for a blowy. 
She was arrested twice on drug charges in 2020 and allegedly led police on a 100 mile per hour car chase through Wichita Falls in 2018 with crystal meth found inside the vehicle after she was stopped. A girl wow. gets terrified Maybe if we had the some... only thing that's going to solve that is a cock. Wrong one, but go ahead. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's maybe like if we had some sort of, I don't know, rehab program instead of punishment programs for these people. You gotta maybe love a girl who can take a punch. Doing this. Her most recent arrest has seen her charge of drug possession and evidence, tam- evidence tampering. Weiss is being held on $15,000 bail ahead of her next court appearance. I started doing matters. drugs after that. Well, yeah, I mean, I started doing drugs probably before that. I'm not in shape, but I don't know how to perform an abortion. <laughs> I mean, it's so true. I'm not. I'm going to be so useless for the zombie apocalypse. That's I'm my fetish. Shape, and I don't know how to perform an abortion. Because it's super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. I mean, uh, that's what I heard the Bama laws were on the books. So, roll tide. So, at first, the police were like, hmm, something's up with this lady. What's with all that asshole yeah. creep? Yeah, maybe that, like, she was like, does she need that? <laughs> we do, uh, here, this one's, uh, from Robert. Our man in the field. field. Yeah. Um, uh, So customs inspectors find cocaine-coated cornflakes in Ohio. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Old cops are bumbling dummies. You can't pay your bail? I could probably fix that for a blowy. Customs authorities in Ohio say they intercepted a shipment of cereal earlier this month with a special frosting on it. I'll say we're snorting lines of corn corn (laughs) chips and shit. No wonder. No no wonder. Fucking Tony the Tiger is so fucked up. Well, yeah. Um, Yeah, this is his supply that he's getting high on all this time. That's why they're great. (laughs) You know, you're not supposed to get high in your own supply. Well, Tony the Tiger can afford to. He's got the never-ending supply of crack-covered fucking cornflakes. And he also, you know, with the endorsement deal, money, money, money. Everyone will be coming on my face (laughs) for money. Yes. Uh, anyway, custom authorities in Ohio say they intercepted a shipment of cereal earlier this month with a special frosting. Cocaine! It's going to cost U.S. You customs some serious and cock. border protection officers in Cincinnati reported finding 44 pounds, 20 kilograms, of cocaine coated cornflakes that had been shipped from South America to a Hong Kong home. Officials said a narcotics detection dog named Pico was checking out the incoming freight from Peru on February 13th when he alerted officers. To hell with the police. That's fucking brazen. They're fucking putting coke. Like, they're just dusting cornflakes with coke, and then they're somehow extracting it later. (laughs) That's just, that's like living daylight's level of fucking hiding, where they put it inside the tire and the rubber. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and then they melted uh, it back out. Or was it the gasoline? I can't remember which, but it was something ridiculous. <laughs> Cincinnati Port Director Richard Glitzby said smugglers will try to hide narcotics in anything imaginable, but vowed that inspectors will use their training, intuition, and strategic skills to stop such shipments. Uh, Old cops are bumbling dummies. I'm yeah, officers found all that the guns, cereal contained white powder. <laughs> First, officers found that the cereal contained white powder, and the flakes were coated with a grayish substance. Both tested positive for a cocaine. So, there you go. The the cocaine and cereal now. And That's other what we're doing. Sex news. <laughs> I mean, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So if you really want to get going on it, that's that's how you do it. I imagine that's the Wall Street supply right there where they just put the cocaine yeah. right on their Wheaties. Yeah, probably. I mean, I would have to think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, that was weird. All lesbians are that was weird. on young women. Wow, that was, no, not what I wanted. I should delete that. Holy shit, what was that? <laughs> All lesbians are praying on young women. <laughs> when the fuck did you say, oh... Oh, well, it's a stereotype. You were saying that there's a stereotype yeah, that. There's a stereotype. And I just yeah. remember the part you where you said to the clip, stereotype. fucking clip that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Violate her body and make sure she can't leave. What? <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Some of these clips need to be canceled. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. You did it to yourself, too. <laughs> Put it in the butt. Put it in the butt. Put it in the butt. <laughs> yeah, that, that one's fine. You don't have to cancel that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cancel this show and end it yeah, already. Yeah, well, fucking Jesus, we gotta do something. <laughs> and with that, we're gonna end this fucking show. <laughs> we're gonna play the ending Legion promo. We're gonna have a little bit more of that funky music, and then this show will fucking end finally. 
If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. some old school funky right there that was pretty cool yeah <laughs> now i'm feeling good <laughs> feeling much better than what i had you read for the news huh yeah right yeah Oof, jesus christ hey matt we're coming down to it you you just yeah. finished up half of march pate man we're we're halfway through Woo! march pate yeah yeah man. we're barreling yeah, wait, ahead that man. means i have a whole nother half left i'm a glass <laughs> half empty kind of guy so <laughs> Yes, you have another half left, you whiny, whiny human being, you. I, I, I really am. I got some fucking problems, man. I got to figure something out. <laughs> well, we could just tell everybody the good thing to look forward to. We're doing the Jaws knockoff next week. We're doing Cruel Jaws, and I have never seen that, so I'm excited. Are we Are we sure we're excited? I'm excited that I've never seen it. I honestly don't. Okay. It's a Matei movie. It's not going to be fucking good. Come on. All right, you're right, you're right. So as I go into it, I should realize that, yeah, it's, it's just not going to be fucking good. Yeah, so we got dose number of Mate movies left in March, and then I'm cutting it off early because we only normally do four in May, so I'm only giving the audience four. I feel that's yeah. only fair. <laughs> <laughs> Then That's after, a, you're, you're a kind and just court tonight. Yeah, then after that, we're going to get back to our regularly scheduled movies that I was supposed to have already be doing until I had to shift everything for the full franchise fest in the episodes. But uh, yes. we are two, four, six, eight weeks away from the start of the full franchise fest as of this recording once it gets released, because this is 291, man. We are 291 still- consecutive weeks of this show. Oh, gee, and we're still not telling anybody yet what the full franchise fest is? Absolutely not. We're still giving them a little tease, man. Just the little itty bitty tease. tease. Making them wish for just a little bit more. Oh, man, just a tease. We're just going to tell you the full franchise fest title in a very tantric way where we're just going to kind of ease you into it and make you really just kind of detach the physical being from the pleasure, if you catch my trend. (laughs) 
Uh, I don't. So no. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you're not a fan of edging. You can't hold out. No, I can't. It's just it's fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find other instances where we've talked about edging and or tantric sex and or court said some stuff that was really fucking creepy that makes you think that he's really weird in bed, all of those other instances that have happened in 290 previous episodes, you can find at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. That is the longest explanation to get us to our landing and launching page I've done. Really? Like, I mean, that was impressive. Yeah, and that was all and in one breath. Everyone now definitely thinks you're a creep. <laughs> oh, I totally am. You can also join our Facebook yeah. group of Cinema Psyops, where I gotta warn you, man, the bots are scrubbing, so be careful how much of a creep you've been even a year ago there, because even I got busted for something. That's fucking bullshit, man. Yeah, Facebook fucking is really starting to fucking suck. If it's been over a year, just yeah. delete it and don't penalize us, you dick. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah. What a bunch of dicks. You can find me there as court psyops bitching about how Zuckerberg sucks, but I don't know for how much longer because, Jesus, there's got to be something better for us out there. Yeah, I mean, something. He is Come Matt on. Psyop there as well. You could go old school and email feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com, but I can promise you he never checks it. Chad, what the fuck is the internet? You can also email feedback to court if you feel like it's cinemapsyopscourt at gmail.com. Tell him why you quit listening to this show and how would you know that unless now is when you decide to quit. What did you just, uh, yeah, why did you quit? <laughs> why did you quit listening to the show? How are they fucking supposed to know you just asked them why they quit listening to the fucking show? Hey, if you're I'm hate listening confused. to this show, fucking let me know. I'm kind of curious, you know? What's keeping you here if yeah. you fucking hate it? Reach out to me, whatever what's, it is. What you doing? <laughs> what's what's going on? And if you're just rage listening to us, that's kind of cool too. I like that. Let us know that while you're why are you rage listening to us? You can tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the porn bot filled shit fest that has redeemed itself in my eyes as Twitter. I'm ah, at court underscore Psyop, and he is at Psyop Matt. You can also find the show represented on the gram of Insta as cinema underscore Psyops. That is the main meme deployment station available to you from Cinema Psyops. I go out and I find the memes and I curate them there in my collection for us all. Such fancy memes. And I only say mine because Matt literally will not do any of that work and it's so easy. On, on the Instagram? Yeah. I don't, I don't even have an Instagram. <laughs> no, you're too busy fucking around on Snapchat. Yeah, I'm fucking, I'm full on Snapchat. I'm Snapchatting now. I'm hip. I'm with it. When are you, I watch MTV. When are you going to start doing TikTok? That's next for you, right? Is that next? Yeah, I don't know if I don't have the rhythm to do the dances. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you did try, everyone would just be TikToked off and kick the fuck out of this week and make it their bitch. <laughs> Everything seems really quiet now for some reason. Really? That's weird. Yeah, well, it is what it is. You hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. Okay. And you're coming through on the channel like you're supposed to over here. Can you still... Uh, can you hear? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I found a glitch, right? So uh -huh. I tr that's Ricky saying yeah. Yeah. From when we did uh, Dr. Butcher MD, Medical Deviant. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, I pitched it down so it sounded kind of like, yeah. 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 But, but like the pitch thing, the control of the pitch goes away if you overload the process oh, <laughs> for this geez. program. Listen, listen, I found the glitch. It's awesome. Listen, you'll hear Ricky's voice if I do it too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, That's awesome. I think I'm buffer overloading that. <laughs> you might be, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Ricky loses all in an and and an enemy. Oh, everybody knows that was him. I, yeah, I, that's right, I started using it right after that because I like the way he said it. <laughs> right, are you recording on your side yet? I am now. One, two, three. Okay, so this is now March Mate. Yes. We are halfway, as of the end of this episode, halfway through March Mate. Can I just say, fuck you. <laughs> fuck rats. <laughs> okay. Let's start the show then. <laughs> I want multiple nights of rats. <laughs> All of the nights. In terror. In terror of the nights. They were setting up food play that they didn't even deliver on, which made me really, really sad that I couldn't make right? you uncomfortable to watch that. Yeah, that would have. I would have been like, God, this is not quite the adventure I was looking for. Yeah, they can start making bread in the bed yeah, with all right. that flour. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, well, now that's some use to it. So, oh, oh. Too far. hi Yeah, hills have eyes, dudes living in this barren wasteland and radiation that collected all of this food that comes to get them, you know? It could be- Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Right. It could be a bunch of Bill Murray's in zombie makeup wandering in and getting shot accidentally because he was mistook for a zombie. Yeah, somebody murrayed him. They are not survivors of an apocalypse. They're like marauding kids looking to go pick up power converters at Hitachi Station. (laughs) You can waste time for your friends when this is all over. (laughs) So, uh, that's a Star Wars quote. That's for you. That's just for you, Court. Congratulations. Yeah, well, yeah, I got it. And I I made a reference to one of the... (laughs) One of the two movies of those that I like. <laughs> the New Hope. Ah, I didn't know you'd be a New Hope fan. That's nice. That's a childhood thing. I. It's my second least favorite. <laughs> second least favorite. Yeah, so it's the one that I like second best. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're uh, you're confusing. So <laughs> here, let me just sum it up for you because I, I haven't caused you enough pain in a long time. Fuck Star Wars, motherfucker! Don't you dare talk about the Holy Trilogy. Take the compliment and the wind, bro, and go snuggle yeah. with that fucking hot girl that is in love with you, apparently, yeah. and you know, chill. You know, you know, you know us normal guys, if we heard that, would just give ourselves a pat on the back, post it to social media, and skip down the street? Uh, you can't lump me in with that for normal guys that would be happy with just that. Oh, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so just stop speaking for me when it comes to sexual congress. <laughs> Never. <laughs> my, my body, fun. my choice, Matt. You don't get to tell me how I use it. I don't care. I'll speak for you. <laughs> I'll speak for you by God. <laughs> um so oh, fuck lost my place going through all that shit. Good, you fucking should have. You don't speak for me about sex. <laughs> This is Bruno Mattei showing the tact I wish Matt would. Wow, Jesus, all right. I mean, fuck you too, (laughs) dick. (laughs) I was just trying to see what tone I was giving you there. (laughs) Yeah, you you gave me the right tone, asshole. (laughs) Ooh, I hit the machine by my dad button, didn't I? (laughs) Yes, you did. (laughs) Motherfucker. (laughs) Makes me feel bad about who I am as a person. (laughs) All right, then my work here is done. Continue your review. When you got a flamethrower, you shoot out a lot of fucking flames on film because it looks awesome. And then you fucking grunt when you do it because fuck them. <laughs> That's why. Sometimes you do amazing backflips because you're in a really fucking kick-ass <laughs> Hong Kong war film that just yeah. blows my mind. <laughs> Uh, Seriously, that actually happened. That is. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Eastern Condors, I think it's called. It's got Sam Hung in it, and he may have been the one doing the backflip. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't yeah. seen it since I was a kid, but it's well, fucking this, amazing. That's awesome. All right, Who all right. the fuck took my paper clips? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing acting. Yeah. It, it makes you feel. Y- yet you complain about the dub, something. but you're feeling something here. I, I am. You know, you're right. I, I, I'm I, almost completely wrong. Um, Almost, but not quite. That's a clip for me. Uh, I'm just going to keep playing how yeah. you keep saying I'm right, and you're almost completely wrong. Yeah, okay. I mean, you couldn't find that till now. I think I've done that before. Um, so <laughs> not anyway. enough, Matt. They don't eat the grain. It's us they want to eat. The rat's food is made out of people. Your attitude seems as negative as murder. You are right. Right. Humans think this. <laughs> no, I'm just being stupid. It's, 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 yeah. Can you hear me? Certain that they can rule the earth, forcing rats to stay Hello? in holes underground. Yeah. Can you hear me? The sewers. Can you hear me? In the sewer. Did they always live in? I cannot hear you, Matt. Okay. 
All right, we lost it there for a second. Yeah, that was, uh, we were about midway through the clip and I was fucking off and then like you couldn't hear me, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't hear you at all and I was like, hello? <laughs> okay, you didn't stop recording, did you? No, not at all. I'm okay. still recording. All right, so just do your notes as if that clip finished on its own because it's three fucking minutes anyway, so fuck it. Let's just go. All right. Just the weakest fucking argument I've ever heard for a guy trying to kill somebody. So I could come up with weaker. Ooh, that's a weird flex. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> that was a that's a weird way to go about that. But OK, OK. <laughs> I had to cell phone that joke. I was like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm like, oh, it's too slow. I got to jump on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a hell of a weird flex on that one. Yeah. Why would you um, care if you could make a weirder excuse? Yeah, why? Jesus Christ. What's now I want to know what some of those weaker ones are. Yeah. What's wrong <laughs> with me? Why would I want to make a weaker excuse? Part of me thinks it's just because you just don't care. <laughs> I think I'm just ultra competitive sometimes. Yeah, ultra good. I'm way too competitive. No way. I can make way more of a shitty argument than you can. <laughs> exactly. Uh, is that the only story? Uh, that that was it? That's we're done? I, I, mean, I, I mean, I can do another one. Yeah, but don't do the corpse one because I don't want to bum everybody out. We have to lead with the corpse. <laughs> Uh, you always lead with the corpse here. on your news. Let's, let's see here. The Oklahoma uh, cut neighbor's heart out and cooked it with potatoes for his family. Uh, <laughs> that's so that fucked up. But, uh, that's, uh... try everyone would just be tick-tocked off and kick the fuck out of this week and make it their bitch <laughs> all right that was well done well done <laughs> i thought it was a bit of a stretch Classy. to say uh, ask no, if you no. were on tiktok but you walked right into it i had to i was like all right you're like <laughs> I, I know what tiktok is <laughs> <laughs> no i, I just I've meant heard like of it i meant i set that up specifically for the tiktok off <laughs> Yeah. Joke. Oh, yeah. I know that. Really that. bad I mean, dad joke. That was, that was a good one. That was, that was well played. Is it a good joke or are you a dad? <laughs> it, that, I mean, okay. Well, I can't say that. So you have to. We, it, once you're a dad, you can differentiate what's a dad joke or just a good joke. You just think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I'm worried about. But we're gonna put it out there. So. <laughs> Fine. All right. I've stopped recording.